today I want to share with you some of my favorite composition tips when it comes to using a 50mm focal length on a full frame camera. I also want to say thank you to Canva for sponsoring today's video. One of my favorite things about the 50mm is that it is such a versatile lens. I like to take advantage of this to capture movement as it's super easy to take a couple of steps forwards and back to capture a set of images to tell a story. I snap so many photos when there's movement, like I'm just to get it. <laughs> um, and then maybe if you hold the fence up closer to the bush too. In this location, I wanted to capture some close-up photos of Charlotte as she was swinging off the fence to be able to get photos with more emotion. And I also wanted a full body photo to tell the story of the location and what she's doing there. As you can see while I'm shooting, I barely need to pause the shoot to be able to go from close up to a full body shot while using a 50mm lens. When you're getting movement photos, I think it's really important not to stop or distract from the flow of the shoot, and a 50 prime can really help achieve that while still capturing a variety of photos. My next tip applies to almost any lens and it's to utilize angles in your location. Something I really like about the 50mm in particular though is that you don't need a huge location to be able to capture a variety of portraits with interesting backgrounds. I like to start by finding one spot and then making the most of shooting from different angles to make each shot look different. This again really helps with the flow of a shoot as you don't need to stop and walk to a different location to get more photos. Instead, you can have the subject in one spot and you, as the photographer, can walk around to get those photos. I'm starting off capturing portraits against this lush green shrub. With the compression of a 50mm, I am able to fill the entire frame with just the green in the background. I think I want to shoot like a kind of a close-up portrait. You can stand a little bit that way. I want to get part of the building in the background too. Next, by moving to the left of Charlotte, I am still shooting in the same location, but I'm getting a completely different background and look to the photos. Instead of a flat background, I've created depth to the photo by shooting at an angle to the buildings. I've made sure to keep a little bit of that bush to the left-hand side of the frame to tie the photos together and for some added bokeh. I really love that by shooting on an angle, you can get different elements into your portrait, such as interesting textures and colors to make your portrait more interesting. Before we move on, I want to let you know more about the sponsor of today's video, Canva. Canva is a super easy to use online design and publishing tool that I like using to create elements for my photography business. Today, I wanna to dive into the video features available on Canva because with Canva, you can create different styles of videos without any experience needed. You can select a template, then use either stock video footage or upload your own videos. You can add animations and even add music through Canva as well. This is a great tool to be able to create eye-catching and engaging landing pages for your photography website like I've done here. You can team up and save with Canva Pro. For just $12.95 a month for up to five people, you and your team can unlock everything Pro has to offer. Plus, you can get a free 45-day extended trial of Canva Pro by using the link in my description. Maybe sitting down here. <laughs> I'm like trying to decide which side looks better. For these next photos, you can see that we are still using the same bush again, but this time I've asked Charlotte to sit down on the other side, so you can definitely make the most of one little location just by using angles. My next composition tip is that with a 50mm focal length, you can make use of busier looking backgrounds for interesting portraits. This works especially well with a fast 50. For these portraits, I'm shooting wide open at f1.4, but you'll get similar results with an f1.2 to an f1.8 50mm as well. And if you're using an f2 to 2.8 50mm, you'll just need to create more distance between you, the subject and the background to get that depth of field. In this spot, we have a lot of lines in the background of our shot, which I really like. Usually when you have one or two prominent lines in the background, I try to avoid having them go through my subject's face as it can look distracting. But in this case, since there are so many lines, I see them more as texture in the background of my photo. To be able to get Charlotte to stand out against this busy background, I've had her sit in a little slither of sun that was poking out from the trees. So as you can see in these final photos, the light is hitting Charlotte directly in the face, so she is the brightest part of the photo compared to the background which is in the shade.
On a 50 millimeter lens, I also really like switching from portrait to landscape orientation really often while I'm shooting, which you can already see me do a lot throughout this photo shoot. With a 35mm, I usually prefer shooting in landscape as it's a wide angle lens which captures more of the environment. With an 85 or 135mm, I typically prefer shooting in portrait orientation since they are isolating lenses and perfect for close ups. But with a 50, I feel like it does all these things pretty well. In the portrait photos I've taken with and without negative space, the background looks really busy and I make use of light to help the subject stand out. In the landscape portrait I took where I cropped in really tight around Charlotte, she looks more isolated, making it a great portrait where the subject stands out regardless of the lighting you have to work with. So you can see in this comparison just how versatile a 50mm lens is. We'll go into the sun for a few shots mm -hmm. as well when you use that pink building. Yeah. We'll shoot like here. Oh, this location is so cool. Uh, take a little step back. We'll just try and keep your face in the sun for these ones. Oh, I love that. Next, I'm capturing portraits of Charlotte with direct dappled light. In this location, I wanted the pink and white buildings in the background, and I personally like to shoot in an angle to buildings to give the photos more depth. If you want a prime lens and you can only afford one, my usual recommendation is to go with a 50mm lens. When I started photography, I was using a kit lens, but I really wanted to upgrade and I could only afford one lens, so I went with a 50mm f1.4. The reason for this is, again, it's just so versatile and you can really see that in this location. I do have a comparison video between the 35 vs 50 vs 85mm focal lengths, which I'll leave linked down below if you want to watch, but I like that when you shoot full body to mid length portraits, you can see more of the location and environment with a 50, even when shooting wide open like I am here. Being able to see more of the location is one of the reasons I love to use a 35mm lens, but you can still achieve that look with a 50. On the other hand, just like an 85mm lens, you can also get beautiful close-up portraits with a 50. On a 35, getting close-up headshots can cause distortion and make facial features appear different in a photo compared to real life. On a 50mm, you still have minimal distortion, but not as much as a 35 where it will cause faces to look different. I also like that you can make out more of the background in close-up shots as well. Okay, a little bit of a close-up. It's cool. For these last few shots, I'm shooting with harsh direct sun as I wanted some high contrast photos that pop and I'm making use of pretty much all the composition tips that I've talked about in today's video. So let me know in the comments which one was your favorite that you'll try out at your next photo shoot. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.